Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be used as medical advice, nor is it advice from a doctor. I am a coach, a recovery coach, and I offer advice from my own experience and my clients. But please, if you think you are in need of medical help, seek it immediately. We'll also be talking about subjects such as binging and purging, depression, and other sensitive topics. So if those trigger you, please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to a Raw Talks episode with your host, your crazy person that talks about bulimia recovery and binge eating and addiction and dopamine and all that sort of stuff, Jacqueline. Uh, But today on these episodes, if you aren't familiar with the podcast, I talk about everything recovery related, but I also have these raw talks where I just kind of vent about certain things, subjects that are on my mind. But I had a profound moment um, today that I think would be helpful to share and it's probably something that you have thought of but if you haven't thought about it um it's been helping me and it's not super tested but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take action on it uh so I turned 29 in this this week which I know for those of you guys that are past the 30 mark you probably are like oh classic you know Jacqueline worrying about her last year in her 20s but society puts a lot of pressure on you to have everything figured out in your 20s before you turn 30 it's some sort of big scary number and it shouldn't be and I'm not necessarily worried about the aging although that does haunt me it's more just so like I didn't think that this was where I would be in my life when I was 29 I didn't know what 29 29 seems so old to me first of all when I was a little kid 29 seemed ancient for somehow and I don't know why that is it's so crazy now to think that I am almost 29 but I know that most people go through this stupid late 20s crisis and it is this week, I haven't really thought about it much, but then this week, I think it's the first week I've not necessarily looked forward to, or first year I haven't looked forward to my birthday in some capacity. Like I've never been one that, I guess when I was little, I would make it a big deal, but I've always been okay with my birthday and looked forward to it and thought it was a nice time of reflection and whatever. But this is the first year that not only is it the last year of my 20s, um, and it's, a, it's an end of a decade for me and the start of a new journey. But it's my first year really being single and, and you know, not having any other person that I am attached to or living with. And I am turning 29. And it's always been what I realized in, in my 20s. I was in a long-term relationship for 10 years. And it really formed a lot of who I was and my youth and grew up with that. But it's my first year learning what to do as a single adult in taking care of myself and treating myself and really realizing that, you know, I'm, no one is dependent on me and I am not dependent on anyone else to take care of my needs or what I want. And so it's just been a huge perspective moment all coming to a head of like, this is me now and what I want to do. And I'm really proud of myself and I don't want to diss myself for any of the accomplishments I have made because I've made a lot and I'm, Again, early 20s Jacqueline was a hot mess and she'd be so proud to know that I am where I am today. But there are a lot of things I still want to change and I was looking at what I want to accomplish uh, in the last year of my 20s and then what I want to accomplish long term and I don't know exactly everything that I want but I know I want to run a marathon this year and I know I want to... uh, do more in my business. I want to offer more coaching and results to people. I want to create products that could help people, which are not completely dependent on me being there. I want to figure out better ways to help people. And I want to grow my business and I want to make more friends. I want to date. I want to travel. I want to live remotely in a country for uh, at least a month, maybe even several months. Like I want to do a lot. And yet it seems like lately I've been in a bit of a funk this past month and that's okay. That happens to all of us. But I was looking at, you know, I'm not, what are the actions? What are the results I want? And then what actions am I taking? And I realized that a lot of my actions and time are being spent by things that aren't going to result in anything for me. And I looked at, I wrote down today, like, hey, what takes up most of my time when I'm not working? And a lot of it is maybe streaming. So I just started rewatching The Office on Peacock. And that's not wrong. You should have comfort shows and stuff like that. But I've seen The Office before and it just takes up time. And, you know, you start one episode and then suddenly you're four episodes deep and you should have been doing something else. And... um. 
I think dating, like I have been actually dating lately, trying to talk to other people and that takes up a lot of time. It's very distracting. I'm not saying you should not date, but I feel like online dating, it's gamified in a way that makes you just like any social social media app makes you want to waste and distract time on it. And I realize I'm spending time with people that I don't necessarily like to spend time with as a whole and they don't add to my life and that is a time suck and a time waster in itself like giving my time to relationships that maybe aren't serving me anymore and then ig scrolling instagram scrolling that sucks so much of my time and it sucks because it's my job to go on there but it's not my job to go and scroll through reels and um that sort of stuff sometimes i'll do gaming that definitely takes up time and snacking like i still sometimes emotionally eat and it takes up my time i don't even care about like the it's not necessarily impacting me on a health level maybe it is but it's more so just about the fact that it wastes time and it's not necessarily helping me with my results. I should just eat bigger meals and that would solve the issue. And yeah, so I listed out all those actions that I'm doing that really don't align with what I want to do. And then I wrote down what do I want to spend my time on. Like where this, this is where a lot of my time is going that is not allowing me to accomplish the results that I want to accomplish. So what exactly do I want to be spending my time on and what will get me to those things? And I wrote down making more improvements in my business, quality friends and time with people that I do truly enjoy and always add to my life, workouts and runs, art, drawing, painting, that sort of stuff, uh, sketching, and then reading. And and I guess I should have included now that I'm looking at this list, family, like making sure I'm spending time with my family, calling my family and close loved ones. Uh, <clears throat> that is it. And I really was like, no, that's if I could only choose to do those things, that's what I would do. Like, why am I wasting time with anything else? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And so I then was thinking about, well, why am I spending all my time on these things? And I realized a lot of it comes down to when I feel uncomfortable or when I feel a little bit bored, or I feel this need to regulate somehow, those are the things that I go to. And they don't intend to take up so much time, but they do suck my time unintentionally, you know, and they just, in the nature of all those things, they are infinite, they can keep you distracted for a long, long time. And I thought about, well, the trigger for doing all those things is when I'm bored, or feel like I need some comfort, or feel like I need to regulate in some way. And so what I've decided to try out this week um, is to, first of all, make a, a lot of those things just more difficult. Like, I think I I can access all these things again if I really need to. Like, I can call up maybe, like, uh, the if I the relationships that aren't really serving me, I can just kind of let them be what they are. And if they really, like, those relationships want to come back into my life, they will find a way or I can reach back out to those people. That's fine. The streaming, I canceled my membership to Peacock. I still have a month, another month left, but I think I'll just delete the app from my iPad and my phone for a few days. And worst comes to worst, I can download it when I actually legitimately want to watch the shows, which would be more so at night, which I think is a more appropriate time to watch it, not in the middle of the day when I'm having lunch or something and it's my only hour free. Uh, Dating app, getting rid of it. It's just like, it's just too distracting or pausing, you know, the profile. IG scrolling. That I think I'm gonna go back to having a time limit limit on that and and a password protected thing something that legitimately locks me out, and that will make me very serious about okay when I'm going on Instagram I only have one hour to do everything business related on Instagram before I get booted out. And I do not want to be booted out of my Instagram when I'm in the middle of maybe a business conversation in the DMs or helping someone or post something and like not get a post on because I was lollygagging on some cat video or something like that. And then also downloading this, uh, deleting the Sims, um, the game, the only game I play really now um, that I don't, my ex had a PS5. I don't have a PS5 anymore. So removing the video games and then the snacking um i i obviously am still going to include some snacks but i'm going to try to beef up my meals a little bit but all this being said what i intend to do then what i'm deleting i'm putting friction in between me and all these kind of buffery habits but then i also am intending to um when i get bored or when i feel this urge to regulate i don't have to force myself to do one of the activities that i really want to do which is 
maybe going for a walk or a run or exercising or working on my business or doing artwork or reading or something or calling a friend or spending quality time with loved ones. I don't have to do something productive when I'm feeling bored or I'm feeling agitated or irritated, all that sort of stuff. But I also can't go to the the easy buffering activities that just give me that quick dopamine hit, like the snacking or the streaming or the, the dating apps or the scrolling. I just have to be with it. And that's going to be my rule throughout this week. And I've gone through times where I've worked really hard, but I've never really, and I've, I've done so much better in my life, obviously recovered from bulimia and helped lots of people stop binging and purging. I know a lot about urge management and procrastination and organization, but I still struggle sometimes. And so hopefully this doesn't make you look down on me. It just makes you see that like you can be really productive and stuff like that and still have some of these issues and none of these issues are detrimental to my life but I don't like waking up feeling like I'm doing the same old same old and I know that I'm spending time on things that just aren't adding to my life in any way and I think now's the time for me to get really serious about it especially as I approach the 29 mark and so we'll see how it goes but I think the rule and what will be different is I think I've always tried to when I have those urges and with bulimia, it was so clear to me, like, just be with the urge, sit with it, allow the feeling until you're ready to regulate again. And I think it's because bulimia felt like such a big deal. And it felt like it was clearly something I was truly struggling with. And I was able to have compassion for myself. But when I have urges to snack or urges to stream or uh, maybe like scroll on Instagram, there's a lot less compassion I realize for myself and I don't see it as trying to regulate or trying to solve a feeling or that I'm having an uncomfortable feeling that I'm coping with in these ways. I just see it as like, oh, I'm being lazy. I should be better. I shouldn't do this, that sort of stuff. And then that gap in lacking, uh, that gap in knowledge and understanding of what that urge is and not using it the way I did with bulimia and like letting myself just be. Then when I had the urges to do those things, instead of saying, just be with a feeling instead, just sit with it, just uh, just pause. I would be like, no, you have to either you have to work or you have to be productive. You can't just do this thing or you can't just sit here. And I realize I'm being hypocritical because I tell my clients this all the time. Like you can just let yourself be. So that's the rule I'm going to follow. I'm going to take my own advice. Time to tune up my own little working habits and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I'll guess I'll report back later to see how it goes. But I think that this is something that I give advice to people all the time and it usually always works. And I'm going to take it for things that aren't even about bulimia. <clears throat> so if you are wondering, you know, how does this even relate to bulimia? I think you can draw the parallels. But if you are struggling with urges, um, know that when you're just being with that feeling, it's going to translate to future times where you're having an uncomfortable feeling and you just need to be with it and you'll be able to apply it, you know, and then be able to recognize what's really happening. And I just sat here um, for about 15 minutes when I had an urge to go I kind of had this realization that I was doing the same old, same old, you know, just in a different, with different labels, different things, but it's similar to like the bulimia days. And I was like, okay, we're just going to sit with this urge. You know, we don't have to do work right now. We already did the, the urgent work today. There's nothing more we have to do right now. Just chill, just be. And I had a lot of random things that came up like, oh, I should do this. I should go get this work done or I should prep work for tomorrow or I should be doing more of my business to make, to, to help more people and to uh, create more answers. Like you need to start improving the, the eight week program again, or you need to um, make a new onboarding process for a one-on-one -on -one clients. Like you should do more, 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 more. That's where my brain went. And I was like, wow, I really struggle to just be present still. And this is something I need to work on. So I took a pen and paper and I just wrote down the little urges that were coming up in my brain. And then after a while, it calmed down. And then I had the urge to make a podcast about it. And that's what brings us here. And I think that that was a good actual like next thing because I do need to make a podcast episode for this Friday. So uh, that was one that I accidentally forgot to not uh, pre-record. But yeah. So I hope that this podcast episode helped you in some sort of weird roundabout way. Um, and if you're also turning 29, let me know how you're handling that. Are you okay? Are you doing good? And those of you guys that have been past that mark 
I know how silly it is. I just talked to a former client who is in her 30s and she's like, I'm so excited for you to join the 30s club. You're going to have so much fun. And the pressure that you have in your 20s is ridiculous. And uh, yeah, so if you're turning 29, Godspeed. If you're in your early 20s, man, I'm so sorry. That's really hard. <laughs> so I wish I feel like everyone's 20s is actually a disaster and it's something that nobody talks about. Everyone pretends that your 20s are the best time of your life and they should be the best time of your life, but they're not. They, uh, they they can be, you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong, but your 20s, you are trying to figure your life out and that is rough. It's hard. You're experimenting. You're not sure. But something I am trying to remember for my 20s as they wrap themselves up is that life is forever journey and in your life doesn't stop, especially as a woman at 30. You have so much more life to live. It's never too late to start, never too late to try things, never too late to take a new journey. Um, you will be doing that hopefully till the day that you die. And that's the kind of life I want to live, which makes you feel quite a lot better about almost turning 30. All right, I'll let you guys go. Never, ever give up on yourself, my friends. And if you need more help with the bulimia recovery or binge eating recovery, or you want to work on me one-on-one um, with these topics, or if you need help with organization, procrastination, all the stuff I was just talking about today, book a call with me. I know what it's like to struggle with those things. And even though sometimes I still struggle, which may make me actually a really good coach for you, I have found ways to work around it and have accomplished a lot in my life in spite of that. And I can help you do the same. All right. Bye.